So read it again. So monistic, antagonistic, and dialectical explanations are not enough because he, he uses one and then he uses the opposite mm -hmm. yeah, to explain. Mm -hmm. Where from a perspective of the subjectivism, it says that it is the consciousness that shapes the world and idealism works primarily with those parameters. Let's say that it comes more after that. Mm -hmm. The other positions pretends otherwise and dialect dialectically oppose the first saying that in fact the consciousness has certain interests that are dictated by the conditions placed by the object. That is what we were talking. So the consciousness will react to the objects because there are properties in the objects that make the consciousness be interested. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes, just a little note on idealism. Uh, I mean, for a definition, is Good. that group of philosophies which assert that reality, as we can know it, is fundamentally mental, mental, mentally constructed, or otherwise immaterial. Right. So that would make sense then. Yes, it, w it would. Says and he's saying it's not works just mentally primarily conscious. with those parameters. Yeah. Of the, the consciousness is the one that construct no uh, no not construct what what word he uses structure yeah yeah the reality it is true and in both cases it is if it is was not true that consciousness plays interest on objects and at the same time objects that dictate the interest of the consciousness in adapting to the world we will not be able to explain the structuring function of the consciousness and the world and the feedback established between the objects that acts on the consciousness and the consciousness that modifies the world. So it is a yeah. structure. Yes. That's essentially what I'm getting at. Yes. Uh -huh. It is precisely because both these positions are right that things work <laughs> and not because one of them the two positions are, and not because one of the two positions are correct, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get the idea? He says, I think we do, right? Well, can we just, sure. just do it one more time? He says, it's, it is true, and in both cases, yeah. if, if it was not true that consciousness place interest on objects and at the same time objects dictate the interest of the consciousness in adapting to the world, we will not be able to explain the structuring functions of the consciousness and the world and the feedback established between the object that acts on the consciousness and the consciousness that modifies the world. Mm -hmm. An incredibly long sentence. Mm -hmm. But it is precisely because both these positions are right that things work and not because one of the two positions are yes. correct. Yes, so he's <laughs> making the case for a structure. Yes, uh, he's making a case for so a structure. So if we put a whole bunch of objects out, mm -hmm. depending on what they are, mm -hmm. and certain ones might mm -hmm. be operating on us as we're mm -hmm. looking... At the for, same time that we are going to structure some of them, yes. and we are subjectively put whatever into yeah. that. And both things and, and that can also uh, it's probably going to explain this later, but it it can also be governed by what you're looking for. Uh, have you ever s noticed if you're looking for to buy a house? Yes, you start to see houses all over the place, over the place. that you never Crazy. notice normally, or anything yes. that or new cars. You know. Yes. Exactly you you right. start to see, and, and when you buy the new car, you see all the other cars that are yeah. just like yours. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. No one. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Never so noticed before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How many Priuses are there? Yeah. Really amazing. It's just <laughs> endless. Yeah. And then there are things weird, like we were just talking with Ken. I mean, with Kurt this morning, that he asked me where is the where is the the foundations for the for the fountain, right? Yeah, and then I said, it, "Well, it's right there, but I cannot see it." And then I said, "Well, it's right there." And yes. then you saw it, right? Uh -huh. But probably the the reason why he didn't see it was because he had an image already of what he was going to see. Yes. And then we talk about the the natives in America never saw the Columbus 
uh, ships, ships because they were not in their space of representation. They have never seen anything like that, so they did not recognize what came in. Okay, the structure, consciousness, phenomena, consciousness is dynamic and definitely mobile. Um, and also is a system of interest that we place on different times of the thinking process. In one moment I can be interested on one thing and in another moment I could be interested in something else and so on and so forth. And if they were not dynamics, they were not mobile, the phenomena that place interest in my consciousness, if they didn't move then the phenomena proper of the thinking, then my interest will be completely fixed. And they're not fixed because, in fact, it's enough that you are a little bit hungry and then your interests are going to go on one, on one side and it will be enough that somebody um, honked the, 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 the thing on the car and then I will, um, my, my interest will be inclined in a complete different direction. What I understand about all of these examples is that Depending on the stimuli that come, you know, if it is an internal one like hunger, then your interest will go somewhere. And then mm -hmm. if you are crossing the street and somebody honk the horn, whatever you, how do you call it? Honk? Yeah, the, yeah horn, honk the horn. horn. Then you're, you see, you will be mm. taken by that stimuli and the consciousness will be mo mobilizing between mm -hmm. stimulus and giving responses accordingly all the time. Mm -hmm. So. The consciousness move, the stimulus move, and the structuring of the phenomena, consciousness is a dynamic one, is what I get, basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds far. like pretty much like what we've understood so yeah. far. And he keeps repeating this. Huh? In, s <clears throat> in such a way that this dynamic reality, in as internal as it is external, uh, makes the variation of the interest in relationship to the consciousness with the world and this is not something uh, too, too extraordinary. Now I have this variability of interest and we can abstract, abstract that. We can have, we can take all from those all those interests that keep changing and apparently are a big disorder, you we can abstract them yeah, and say that is the moment of thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it any better than I did. <laughs> uh -huh. But that's what he's saying. So we have... Meaning a, to say the moment of thinking is when you're doing all that. Exactly right. That is a, the, what in could quotes, be internal, the could moment be of thought of, or the moment yeah. of thinking. Yeah. The moment of thinking that goes in quotes, goes in quotes because it's referred to the thinking process and not the moment of the external time or the moment in which the thinking it's referred to the thinking and not the moment of the external time, the moment in which the thinking make an abstraction, the moment in which the thinking is the atom of the thinking process, is the most, the, the, the smallest part of the thinking process, the particle, the most elemental particle of the thinking process. Mm -hmm. So first, that, he, first he abstracts the the structure, right, and then he talks about reducing the, it to essential time. element. Right. Yeah. 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 And oh, that's time, a moment. Reducing it in time. Right. Yeah. In time, and then, yeah, he says, we work with it as an abstraction. We work an ab as an abstraction in order to be able to fix the interest. Mm -hmm. He goes on. In, in, in one moment I have this system of interest. In another moment I have a, another system of interest. But it's not 
that there is a vari a total vari a variability, yeah, variation mm -hmm. of interest because that then we will not be able to produce other type of operations in the thinking process. Yeah? If everything was super dynamic and super fluid, yeah, and we will, I will jump from one interest to the other, then you will not be able to produce operations like the register of an, a given interest or the capacity to um, compare register of that interest with a register of a, of a different interest that are relations that I can establish when I am thinking. Mm -hmm. He said, do you understand? And I said, no, but I continue. <laughs> <laughs> I understand to a point. But it more or less, yeah, talking about that not everything is so, so dynamic. They are system of interest and that's why we can, we can compare. Yeah, I am interested in the food, I am interested in this, and I am not interested in something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Because that I can I can do that abstraction and it's not in in real time. It's not at the same speed that things are happening in the outside world. You know? So that's what I understand so far. We can talk then about moments of the thinking when you fix an interest. I fix an interest in that moment in which the recorder, mm -hmm. and I see the recorder. Now I am interested very much in the recorder. Even though my interests are very mobile, now my interest in the recorder and within the recorder, there are little interests that are circulating. But that fixed interest is for me a moment of the thinking process. So that's why we talk about a moment of the thinking when you are able to fix an interest. So that's what, all of this is all to fix an interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is amazing how he explains it, huh? how deep he can go into the whole thing with mixing it with the internal stimuli, with the external, with the timing, and all of that mm -hmm. because. I got interested in this. This is good. <laughs> I mean, it's really good, and I don't get the to the total thing. But what I get is really phenomenal, or phenomenological phenomenal. <laughs> very, very interesting. Okay, fixing an interest is for sure a degree of determination of the thinking. Determination in two ways. I say that the fixation of the interest on the recorder is a determination of the thinking first because when I fix my interest in the recorder and I put that ambit upon the recorder, this determines my thinking. I cannot think any other thing until that interest plays over that recorder, displays itself towards another object that will fix my interest. Then I can say that the tape recorder has two little levels, that the recorder has a little cassette, and that the recorder has a several other parts. What is going on there? What happened is that we're f at w as soon as you fix your interest, my thinking process is fixed, determined by the position of the object in front of the proposed interest. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. That's what